Good afternoon, everyone. I thank God for all of you and for every single soul that uh, who, uh, who joined in this ministry and even for those who have just come today. Uh, let us pray first before sharing God's word. Lord, uh, we thank you so much for all your goodness and kindness. We thank you for everything you've done into our lives, even for those things that it's hard to appreciate, it's hard for us to see the good things out of these uh, circumstances. We thank you so much, our God. And we continually pray that as we listen to your word, it will be the Holy Spirit who would speak into our hearts so that we will understand your word fully and deeply and we will not ignore it, but we will live according to your word. Allow us, or each and every one of us, to be born again today. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy 10th anniversary po sa lahat. Thank you for uh, being with us as we celebrate the 10th year anniversary of this church. I would just like to share John chapter 3 verse 3 to you. It says here, John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, the word of the Lord. Okay, let me ask you, when did you say that you are a born again? Okay, you have a relationship with God. That's a good point. What else? You are Christ-minded. That's very good. We'll go on to that. That's the first one. Okay, you have a relationship with God, you are Christ-minded. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, when you accept the Lord as your Savior, very good point. I'll mix that up uh, uh, with uh, the first one. Christ-minded, you accept the Lord as your Savior. Okay, is being a born-again by attending a born-again church? No? Okay, so... What are the bases? What are the aspects of your life wherein you could say you are born again? Because it says here, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Or he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me show you uh, an illustration. Uh, before I left my province, Bohol, way back 1994 to go to Manila for a formal training, there was this uh, treasure hunter they were digging into a cave because according to the treasure hunter and the, they have a tre uh, gold detector, they, there is a gold on that cave. And then when the gold detector's uh, sound was so loud, this man went into the cave in the middle of the night hoping he would be able to see the gold. And guess what? He saw something uh, like a soap bar uh, with uh, uh, we are wrapped with uh, like alkitran, a uh, uh, is that alkitran, a black coal. He was expecting to see a gold with yellowish color. So when he saw this bar, he just left it. Why? Because in his mind, I would see a gold as in kumikislap kislap naginto, shining color, gold color. So he was expecting like that. So he just ignored that bar, not knowing that it was gold wrapped in a coal. When the treasure hunter with the gold detector came the next day, they realized that the gold, the, uh, gold detector sound was so loud. Why? Because it was just left there. If your mentality is to see gold like as it is what you see, you would not be able to see it. Are you following me? Okay, another example. I'm not sure if you really understand this illustration. It is my hope that you would get my point. In the hospital, we have a medication called Dantrolin. This is for muscle relaxant. And Dantrolin most probably is in a liquid form. Are you with me? So if a patient has a Dantrolin, I would be looking for a bottle with 
than Jolin. Sometimes it comes on a capsule. Are you with me? So if you are looking for a bottle, but then the dantrolene came on a capsule form, you would not be able to see it. Why? Because your mind is programmed that it is in a bottle. So when agency nurses come, they would come to me, uh, Edmond, when could, I, when could I find the dantrolene? I am expecting it to be in the bottle. I, s I will tell them, look for a capsule form. Okay, another illustration. We also have a medication called glycoperonium. It comes with a vial. This vial, you just break it and then uh, aspirate the, the liquid from the vial. But uh, glycoperonium comes also in a liquid form. Are you with me? Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, the vial was inside the box. It's just a small box. So you are anticipating for a vial, uh, a glycoperonium in a vial inside the box. But sometimes it does not come in the box, in, in, a, in a box, but in a liquid form. Are you with me? If your mind is not renewed, if your mind is not transformed in a way God wants us to think, you would not be able to see the kingdom of God. Amen? So, first and foremost, we can say that we are born again if we ha our minds are transformed and we acknowledge the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. By accepting the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you become born again. Is that it? Huh? There must be repentance. Okay, so the second aspect of our life for us to be born again is by our living. Okay, some people, they, uh, no offense, there are some born again churches or Pentecostal churches or full gospel churches, they say the Catholic would not be saved. Are they right? No. Why did they say that? Huh? I, I mean, what is the reason why they say that th there is no, or most of the Catholics are not saved? Any idea? Because Catholics have idols. But I'm telling you today, idols are not limited to images. You could be attending to a born-again church or you could be a attending to a Catholic church, but being born again in the eyes of God is not based on what church you go to. It is based on a personal relationship with God. Amen? Nobody knows who is born again or who is not. It is God's job, God's job to us, to, to judge us if we are born again or not. What I'm trying to say is, you could be born again by doctrine, but by your lifestyle, you are still living according to the flesh. Amen? And some, of, some other churches, they say, they quote Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Right? Mm, what are you talking about, Pastor? There is no condom condemnation to those who is in Christ. Right? You're not sure. If you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you are born again. Is there no condemnation? Huh? Ah, you don't understand the question. <laughs> Let me make it clear. If you are in Christ, is there condemnation or no? There is condemnation. Why? 
Okay, this is where born again, some, again, some born again churches pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is therefore no now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. You're right. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So e even if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you still walk according to your flesh, of course there is condemnation. Amen? If you say there is no condemnation, I if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, what's the point of going to church then? So being born again, you are no longer walking or living according to your flesh, but you are living according to the Spirit. But the question is, are we, li are we really living according to the flesh or to the Spirit? Uh -uh, it's easy to say that when it's Sunday, Pastor, I'm living according to the Spirit. What about Mondays to Saturdays? Are you still living according to the Spirit? Or flesh? <laughs> the way you smile at me, I know what you are trying to say. Okay, so first, we can, we can say we are born again if our minds have been renewed and we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, if we live according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. Third, we, we, we can say we are born again by our, what do you think? Priorities. Do you agree with me? God said, or Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you are born again, if you have a close relationship with God, your priority is the kingdom of God. Uh -oh. Tahimik kayo, ano? <laughs> Are you following me? So, it, uh, just like Brother Ronald has said, being in the fellowship, uh, going to the church, become a part of their life. Amen. It is part of your routine. It is part of your. It is part of your responsibility that without going to church, without listening to God's word, your life will never be complete. That's why you learn how to prioritize the kingdom of God. But sad to say, lots of people they, although they don't go to Catholic church, I, I'm not against religion. I'm not looking on each religion, but I am looking. I am after of the personal relationship with God. No matter which church do you go, what, what, what's most important is your priorities in life. Amen? Is the kingdom of God the priority of your life? Oh, you could not say it, it loud. Amen! Amen. Respeto lang ata eh. <laughs> Our minds has been renewed and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, by our living, our lifestyle, our walk in life, we're not walking uh, according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Third, our priorities. Fourth, we can say we are born again by whom we serve. God. Ah, that, that's a good one, but I'm, I'm just really wondering if we serve God. Let me show you. Ah, this is a good opportunity for me to, to promote my book, <laughs> Two Masters. Did it say, Two Masters, we cannot serve God, or we cannot serve God and Satan? Did God said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you cannot serve God and Satan? Did it say like that? What did it say? We cannot serve two masters, God and money. Who do you think you serve? God or money? Oh. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Why? 
God said, it is impossible to serve both God and money because we either become loyal to the one and despite the other. Just a very good example. We work for 37 to 40, 45 hours a week. And then on Sunday, it's only two hour service, except anniversary. <laughs> But how do we behave when it comes to services? Hello. We don't go, we don't go to, to work late. We wake up early going to work. We don't want to be told wh when at work. We are faithful at work. We, we refuse invitations if we are at work. But when it comes to church services, pastor, and I could not attend today, my cousin arrived, so I need to, to take her around. Where's your priorities? Seek first the kingdom of God. Pastor, I could not attend to church today because we are having a party. Wow! Mabuti pa yung party, priority mo. You should prioritize the kingdom of God. And then, ah, when there is a party or there is a birthday celebration, you change schedule. Could we change a, a shift? Can I go annual leave? Because there is an occasion. We didn't come to church. Could you attend to church? Sorry, I, uh, I know the Lord understands me. I will be working. Hallelujah. Ah, let's get practical. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, you know I'm going to, to work today. Bless me. Just a short prayer. After work, you are so tired, you just pray, Lord, you know how tired am I from work. Please understand me. Thank you very much. And then when you pray, you think the Lord is a drive through McDonald's. You just You say your order and collect your orders on the next counter. Hallelujah. You don't even give him a chance to say something. You just want, you just do all the talking. You just all pray and ask for something. That's not a good attitude. Is that the way you serve the Lord? Di nga kayo makainit eh. Amen? So, Earning pulse is not uh, is not bad. I'm not saying uh, you should not be working, but what I'm trying to say, we should be able to serve God. We should be faithful to God. We should be loyal to God because most of the time we are most faithful to work than God. Amen. <laughs> what was the third temptation Satan did to Jesus? No, that was the second. Third, third. No, that was the second as well. Kill yourself. Come on, hindi kayo nagbabasa ng Bible? Huh? Satan said, I will give you all the glory of the world. You All you have to do is worship me. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, because it is written, Worship the Lord thy God alone and serve Him. But to be honest, we're so faithful to our employer. We are so faithful to our work, to our jobs. When it comes to church activities, I'm not so sure if everybody is faithful. And that is because we're not that matured in being a born again. Amen? How many have we tackled? First, if we accept the Lord Jesus to transform our mind. Second, by our living, our lifestyle. Third, by our priorities. Fourth, by the way we serve. Fifth, what are the things you are seeking for? Let me ask you. Oh, kingdom of God? What, what are you seeking for in life? What are you after? What are your aspirations? What are your struggles or labors? Your endeavors in life? What are they for? Okay, let me read you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. 
This is a, a, a real mark of a born again, okay? Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Any idea of anybody who has an idea of what is written in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2? Huh? No? Nobody has an idea of what is written in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2? I'll show you then. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. By a stand-alone verse, if this is the only verse we are classifying our maturity as born again, it says, if you then were raised together with Christ, seek those things which are above. In other words, if you are still seeking the things on earth, Are you born again or not? Huh? Huff, puff. Did you get it? Do I have to read it again? Okay. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Just one quick self-examinator. What occupies your mind most of the time? Is it the heavenly reward? Is it the riches in heaven because you serve him on earth? Or work, 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 job, job, holiday, overtime, babysitting, uh, 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 investments, resort. Oh my goodness. If you were raised together with Christ, seek those things which are above. In other words, if you are still looking, we are still chasing, if we are still pursuing the things on earth, I'm not so sure if you are a real born again. <laughs> is that, is your silence means yes? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not boasting of myself. Just a short testimony. Uh, as his Sister Rita mentioned in her prayer that I, I'm not rich. I've got plenty of otang. <laughs> But I could say I've got the satisfaction of life. Blessing wise, the, what the world could offer, I have it all. Utang. <laughs> What I'm trying to say here is because God has moved in my life, my focus, my, my, my pursuits in life are not based on worldly things, but I am purchase, uh, pursuing the heaven reward, rewards in heaven. Amen? And it's a good thing. Because I'm running out of time, last but not the least. If you serve the Lord, if you live for the Lord, you should please the Lord. But unfortunately, there are lots of people who say, I serve the Lord, I know the Lord, I worship the Lord, but they please men more than they please God. The more you please men, the more you are displeasing to God, but Whether you please men or not, as long as you please God, God will be pleased with you. And I'm telling you, if it is your heart's desire to please the Lord, you will encounter persecution. You will encounter ridicules. You will encounter reproach. You will encounter, you, you will encounter insults. Let me ask you, this is Sister Rita's favorite verse. What does Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 say? Okay, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, as we always told, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Is it true? Did you see the context? 
What's the context of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5? No, that's not the context. You're just quoting one part of it. Okay, I'll read it to you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. I, I'm almost finished, okay? It says here, be satisfied, be content with what you have, okay? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Did you get it? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. You are the one who let the Lord. Let me ask you, who are you trying to please? If it is, if the conflict is between your wife and God, will you please God? Yes, dear. <laughs> if the conflict is between somebody and God, will you choose God? In fact, in Luke chapter 14, it says, if we don't learn to hate our loved ones, our mother, our father, our brothers and sisters, we are not worthy to follow the Lord. Amen? But sad to say, most of the time, we please this man than we please God. Hello? Am I right? Just to cut... I will end up here with a short sharing. Uh, we're, we're seven in the family. Uh, not all of us know the, know the Lord. It's only uh, our eldest and then me and I could not distinguish with the rest. But some of them are, uh, let's, I would say, I don't think they know the Lord. Let's just put it that way. Because of their lifestyle, I've, I've mentioned this in Bible studies, that uh, my one of my sisters, she got married in the Philippines. She was here, uh, engaged in another, uh, having relationship with another man. She went to the States. Uh, she took her husband from Philippines, and then the other man is with her as well. I don't understand it very well. <laughs> my other sister here in, in UK, my other sister here in UK, she got three children with her husband. They decided to divorce. They separated. I don't know if there was a legal paper. They separated ways. And then she, she, she also had a relationship with an uh, Indian guy. And then, then, and then her boyfriend didn't even know that they have a child. They separated ways. The father of the child didn't even know that they have a child. Now she's with a white man. I could not accept it because they also claim, I know the Lord, I pray the Lord, I go to the church. What kind of relationship is that? What I'm trying to say, I don't mind if they say something against me. I don't mind if they say I judge them. I do not judge them. They give, uh, they give something for us to say about them. But even if they would not allow me, they, they, even if they would not change by what I say, at least I tried. And I would never tolerate it. Amen? They hated me for that. I don't care. Why? Because God's standard, it says, there is no adulterer that will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? Okay, so first, what was it? If we, if we accept the Lord, our Jesus, uh, our, the Lord Jesus our, our, and our Savior, our, and our minds are being transformed. Second, by our living, lifestyle, our walk, we walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Third, priorities. Fourth, our service, we serve the Lord. Fifth, the things we seek for. And then last, who are we pleasing? Are we pleasing the Lord or our employer? Are we pleasing the Lord or somebody else? Because John chapter 8 verse 29 says, The Father who sent me has not left me because I always do the things that pleases him. 
Do not use Hebrews 13 verse 5 as a, as a general reference. Oh, God will never leave me nor forsake me. Try to use John 8.29. The Father has not left me because I always do the things that pleases Him. Ako'y tumula mahabang mahaba. Ako'y umupo. Tapos na. Let us pray. Let us pray. You can uh, be, uh, remain be seated. Okay? Lord God, I pray for each and every one of, uh, the, uh, of us, oh God, so that uh, our, our names wi will be written in the book of life. As we open our hearts and receive the Lord our Savior, let it be, Lord, that our names has been written in the book of life. As you said, Lord, whoever believes in Jesus will no longer perish but shall have eternal life. But allow us not to stop there, O God. Allow us to grow mature, being born again. We should not walk according.